Good morning and greetings to each of you and welcome to our Martin Luther King annual breakfast program. Now I realize we do not have bacon and eggs, but we do want to say how happy we are that you took time to be a part. We are excited about this program, even though we are virtual. We are excited about the man we remember. We are excited about the legacy that we recall today. And we're so thankful to the Georgie Shaw Museum uh, directors. We're thankful to uh, Ms. Green, uh, Ms. Rosalind Green, for being so kind to, to make this facility available. I'm standing right next to a portrait of Dr. George Shaw, and that is historical. It's just to be here as we honor Dr. King makes it even more special. Let me say to all of you how much we appreciate each year you joining in. I think this celebration is very significant in our community. I'm grateful to the Human Relations Commission and I thank you on behalf of our chair, chairman, uh, Reverend John Gooch, uh, for being a part, for all of your support throughout the years as we have come together. And uh, in my greetings to you today, I think this uh, program each year is very significant because I see it as an opportunity for the community to really come together and have this special bond of remembrance, of appreciation for who we are as a community. And to do that, we, we honor Dr. King because of the legacy that he started, his approach uh, using nonviolence to bring us together in love and in unity. So that's the spirit that we come today in a community, in a spirit of unity, bonding us together as a people, loving our community, and trying to perpetuate those things that Dr. King stood for. You are in for a special treat today. You will hear from, from students. You will see those who have worked so hard to make this possible. So I say to you again, greetings to you. We are so happy that you could be a part, and I hope each of you will enjoy our program today. Lord, we ask that you would continue to bless our Human Relations Commission, that you would bless our county and our county leaders. Lord, we ask that you would continue to bless all our residents and to keep us safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. Lord, we ask that you would look at our program and that you would bless it, that you, that as we go through it, that, that we might have a, a eye towards you as we think about the the things that Martin Luther King taught us about love and care for each other, about understanding. Lord, we ask that you would open our hearts and minds to this program, to those that will present the things that we do, that we might do them in a way that's pleasing in your sight. Lord, we know that we've had a very difficult time in the last year. Lord, we ask that you would help us to be understanding of each other, that you would give us a heart and a mind to be more like you. That you would help us to search our hearts so that we might be more loving people, more caring people, more thoughtful people about how we interact with each other, what we say and do with each other. And to remember that we're all neighbors. That as Jesus taught, that we should love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Lord, we ask these things in your mighty name, amen. Hello again. Today I will be sharing with you the goal and the purpose of the Granville County Human Relations Commission. The goal, it is to shall, it shall be the goal of the Human Relations Commission to facilitate the prevention and or resolution of problems in areas affecting the human relations of all citizens residing, working, or trading in Granville County. The purpose? To encourage understanding and goodwill between all citizens regardless of race, sex, religion, creed, nationality, or economic status and thus promote the, Granville, the general welfare of this community. To identify concerns within the community which could jeopardize the welfare of the community, to promote peace, understanding, respect, 
goodwill and harmony among all citizens. The Granville County Human Relations Commission may promote public interest in its recommendations in such a manner as to lessen any tensions and promote goodwill with all citizens. Greetings to everyone on this special day again. We come now for one of the very special parts of our program. We're so thankful to our schools and to our students for participating in the MLK essay contest. In keeping with our tradition, the first place winners will now share their essays with you. I'm so thankful for the thoughtfulness, for the research, for all of the efforts they made to do their essays. We are grateful to their parents uh, for their support and encouraging them to do so and all the school staff, the principals and the teachers for working with them. We have decided that the first place winner at the middle school and high school level will read their essays at this time. We're so happy to have Carissa Burdine, an eighth grade student at Butler Stem Middle School, to read her essay. We congratulate her today, and I know you will be thrilled as you listen to the essay that she's about to read. Carissa, thank you so much, and I turn things over to you. Martin Luther King Jr. was born on January 15, 1929 in Atlanta, Georgia. He was a Christian minister and activist who became the most known spokesperson and leader in the civil rights movement from 1955 to 1968. King led peaceful protests, which showed his integrity and his Christian values. He brought publicity to major civil rights activities, emphasizing the importance of nonviolent protests. Martin Luther King's success was greatly impacted by his many soft skills. He was an incredible motivator, leading 200,000 people to march on Washington on August 28, 1963, where he delivered his famous I Have a Dream speech. I believe if he was alive today, he would advocate to stop police brutality by leading peaceful but powerful protests. He would spread awareness of police brutality and racism. He would seek justice for the ones killed at the hands of Russian police officers. He would help put an end to or to do COVID-19 by encouraging people to wear masks, wash their hands often, and encourage social distancing. He would work tirelessly to get PPE for our essential workers in our schools. He was all about humanity and loving each other, so he would help us understand that we are all in this together. Martin Luther King Jr. would help spread the importance of Black Lives Matter movement by showing us that we are stronger together and our skin doesn't, color doesn't matter. He would do this by planning peaceful protests. He would remind us of all the people that stand for the Black Lives Matter movement and how they come from all racial backgrounds. I believe he would meet with the government officials and explain what the Black Lives Matter movement actually means and give them clarity about the movement. Martin Luther King Jr. would help everyone to understand the real issues in our minority communities and give solutions to make it better. He believed that we are all humans and we all deserve to be treated equally and fairly and given all the same opportunities regardless of our skin color. Martin Luther King Jr. was a kind man with integrity and Christian values. He would be sad to see the way our world is today. He worked hard for racial equality when he was alive, so I believe if he was still alive today, he would be fighting for racial equality, working to educate people about COVID-19, and seeking reform in the police departments across the nation. He would lead peaceful protests and give empowering speeches to get his point across. Martin Luther King Jr. was intelligent and loving in everything he did. He knew more people like him in today's world. What, a, what an awesome job, Carissa. Congratulations on such a wonderful paper. And uh, this time, we will now have the high school first place winner, Haley Erickson. She's a 12th grade student at Granville Central High School. Haley. I never expected to start my year as a senior, being in the middle of a pandemic. I always expected that I would have a normal senior year, but unfortunately, it was taken away. I guess you could say that I have a story to tell my kids and grandkids when I'm older. But what is going on between the COVID-19 pandemic and somatic racism is a different story. It's life-changing. Right now we are living through what I learned in history. All the viruses and diseases, protests, violence, and police brutality. And the people who changed the world. 
One of those people was Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I remember learning about Dr. King's accomplishments and his golden heart. I'm very grateful for what he accomplished for the future of children's education, equality for everyone, and his passion for peaceful protesting. COVID-19 has affected everyone in some sort of way, but we all are struggling to try to adapt through these difficult times. I wonder what Dr. King would think about us right now when it comes to this chaos. Based on his values and beliefs, I think he would want is to have faith and be selfless during this pandemic. Dr. King voiced his own opinion because nobody else would. He believed that everyone should come together no matter their skin tone. Because he knew that at the end of the day, we are all humans and everyone puts their pants on the same way. We all are equal and that is why Dr. King believed that we should not be judged by our skin tones but for our character. Dr. King believed that if we, if we are going to protest, then we should do it peacefully. This year has been very violent with the riots and Dr. King would not accept this choice of action. Dr. King was always peaceful and thought police brutality was unacceptable. I think a comment made by one of, his, one of Dr. King's friends named John Lewis was a good explanation of what Dr. King would feel if he was still here today. Mr. Lewis said to the writers here in Atlanta and across the county, I see you and I hear you. I know you're in pain your rage, your sense of despair, and hopefulness. Judge has indeed been denied for far too long. Rioting, looting, and burning is not the way. Organize, demonstrating, sit in, stand up, and vote. Be constructive, not destructive. Dr. King has changed our world for the better. And now that we are in hard times, we need to come together to, to get through these hard times. They made us so proud today. I'm so grateful for the research, so grateful for the effort that you made. The focus on nonviolence, what a great tribute to Dr. King. As we have seen things happen in our country that hurts our hearts, if we could just take into account everything that's been said today, we would really be a much uh, healthier or safer community. And uh, hats off to you for a job well done. Again, congratulations. Two, three. Hello and welcome. So today I'm at the Granville County Museum and I will be sharing with you the winners of the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Essay Contest. This year we had a host of students that participated from every school within Granville County, which is the first since I've been on the Human Relations Commission. So for the middle school, our top four winners were first place, Carissa Birdline from Butnerstone Middle School. Second place, Jordy, Jordy Cruz Cruz from Holly Middle School. Third place was Jay Berry from Granville Academy. And then fourth place was Melody Crawford from Northern Granville Middle School. Our high school top four winners were, first place, Haley Erickson from Granville Central High School. Second place, Maisha Cross from Granville Early College. And third place, J.R. Crutchfield from Webb High School. And finally, fourth place, Savinity Jordan from Southern Granville High School. The topic that the students wrote about was doing a self-assessment on what would Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. do in today's society based upon the current issues that we've all been facing in 2020, which were COVID-19, police brutality, protest, and riots. So I want to thank all of the students throughout the entire county that participated including the winners, because they all put in a lot of great effort into the essay contest. So thank you.
one. Good morning. I'm William Betts, William o. Betts, a member of the Grandma County Human Relations Council. And we're here this morning for our annual MLK Junior Breakfast. And I'm honored to get to introduce our speaker this morning, the Reverend Jeanette A. Pascoe, pastor of the United Christian Fellowship Baptist Church Inc. here in Oxford. And Reverend Pascoe, we are honored for you to be our speaker this morning. Mm -hmm. We know things are a little different at this time, but with God's will and we know we will have a successful program. All we're doing is different way we used to do it. And thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Yes, it is very different. It is very different today in a new uh, light of fellowship and, and our MLK breakfast, not to be at the church with all of our neighboring friends and family but we are here today just the same and we do thank God for allowing us and I thank you for the introduction uh, Mr. Bess and I would like to say thank you to the Granville County Human Relations Council. I'm honored to have received an invitation as your guest speaker for such a prestigious program today. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. will be remembered for his fundamental ideas of social justice his tenacious effort in being a champion of for the dis disenfranchised and his biblical scholarship that defined his ministry as a Baptist preacher. Dr. King's legacy is cemented not only through his labor as a civil rights leader, but as a devout Christian whose leadership and service to mankind has inspired millions through his works. In my research, I came across some very interesting information pertaining to this very date here, dated 57 years ago. On January 18, 1963 in North Carolina, our then governor, Terry Sanford, in the midst of a civil rights era, established the North Carolina Good Neighbor Council. His words were because it's honest, and it's fair for us to give all men and women their best chance in life. So let's fast forward to today. At our local level, here we are today. We find the Granville County Human Relations Council at work. I also found in a vision for the Granville County Human Relations Council and it states, our vision is to create a countywide atmosphere and a place where everyone is treated fairly. And the mission states, the mission is to foster mutual understanding among residents of Granville County and eliminate prejudice, intolerance, and discrimination, making Granville County a better place for all people to live, work, and to do business. The commission advocates, promotes, and works to eliminate discrimination in the areas of employment, public accommodation, and fair housing. So here we see Granville County Human Relations Council at work, working together and making a difference. So to you, the Granville County Human Relations Committee uh, Council, continue the work. Continue to be steadfast and unmovable. Continue the work that was started many years ago. Your efforts to promote inclusion and fairness to all people is appreciated and doesn't go unnoticed. I come before you today as an humble continuation of Dr. King's legacy. I'm here to assist you in service and being an advocate and supporter of the disenfranchised by empowering them to find their own voice through service, deeds, and random acts of kindness to others. We will all seek to understand what God has commissioned us to do and to find and feel the commands that Jesus did while he walked this earth. I believe Dr. King was also commissioned by God to do a great work. We may never reach the level or the impact that these two have achieved, but however, God has commissioned all of us to do a work. And the topic of my message today is servant leaders also serve. Servant leaders also serve. Father God, we thank you for another time to come before you, a time to give you praise, glory, and honor. God, in the day uh, uh, of celebrating uh, and remembering and reflecting on Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s life and his legacy, God, 
We ask God that you will allow us to continue to be servants, steadfast, unmovable, being commissioned to do a work in this earth, and keep us steadfast on this journey. For it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. So now, the topic is servant leaders also serve. For a scripture reference, I will use Isaiah chapter 1, verses 16 through 18 in the NIV. Wash and make yourselves clean. Take your evil deeds out of my sight. Stop doing wrong. Learn to do right. Seek justice. Defend the oppressed. Take up the cause of the fatherless. Plead the cause of the widow. Come let us settle the matter, says the Lord. So now, when we reflect back to Dr. King, we, are, we have been shown and we also have been taught how to be servant leaders by his life. What is our motivation to serve, people? Is it for likes on our social media accounts? Is it to fill a quota of kind deeds and hope the Lord sees our good deeds and find favor in us? What compels us to lead? Is it an innate calling from the Lord in a specific field? It is, does it mean it's a means to the end? Do we need this leadership role because it's going to fill some kind of gap in our professional lives? The term servant leader has been lost. However, I want to give you a little insight today, a few points to define servant leaders and servants. Being a servant leader is unique and it has many characteristics, but today I will give you three that I chose that would be awesome. Today I would like to highlight those three. And so we talk about having a very essence of what we do, being servants to other people while still remembering and the overarching goal is to build God's kingdom here on earth. First point. Servant leaders build teams. Effective leaders never bring down their role is to build and to bring active participation from the team. The leader uses their influence by being transparent in their dealings to gain the trust of the team of servants. Servant leaders build a team by reflecting on what has happened in the past and try to make better. Reflecting on Dr. King's legacy and his many accomplishments weren't performed by him alone. He was able to build a team of servant leaders by his own actions. He was always in motion. Dr. King had compassion and humility to draw people around the world. He was a man that the place where circumstances were, he, were to be, he was to be found. He would be there for the disenfranchised and their needs before his own needs or his own family. Many, many teams of people form all type organizations to be able to serve as servants on his team. They came to the aid of the civil rights movement. They joined forces with Dr. King to see the betterment of all people, improving race relations regardless of race, sex, religion, creed, nationality, or economic circumstances. I suggest today to all of us that we be sure that we're serving on the right team. Let's hope we're building and leaving a legacy that not only mankind will reflect on, but speak well of us in the years to come, but also that God himself will be well pleased. We must be sure we are servant leaders from our hearts. Second point, servant leaders inspire. Have you ever had something to do and all you need was just a little bit of inspiration? If you just had a little nudge, you felt that you could get it done. Well, servant leaders are to inspire those that are on the team. Oh, we can serve, but can we serve better if we are inspired? Oh, yes, we can. To serve or even want to serve, we need that inspiration. It's one of the, the tools that lights the fire, as you may say. Uh, the movement flows like a well-oiled machine. If the machine hasn't been oiled and nothing has done, it's just been sitting stagnant, it's going to have a rough start. But when it's been well-oiled and there's been movement, it moves with precision. People are in, in a good harmony. 
and they're vibing together. Work seems like play when you're in a good relationship with your team players. We servant leaders need directions, we need objectives, and we need a purpose. And injecting these values and lighting the fires of compassion to others, it is vital that we be successful in doing so. We're inspired by other people. We inspire people to have a hunger and a thirst to do more and to go further. They will chase you down to be a blessing. They will chase you down to offer their services when they've been inspired. So the team is encouraged. Don't be the one that, that see funding being low and see the, the uh, funding account half empty. Be the one to see the, the funding account half full. I say look at it on the positive side and be truthful. I said before, integrity will go far in team building. And it goes the same length with inspiration. Moral values is tough for some people. But servant leaders have been commissioned to do what is right. That's the gospel. The people were inspired to support Dr. King in his quest to defeat the injustices because he believed in what he was doing. You have to first believe in what you're doing to be able to inspire someone else to come along. I, I know that's to be true. I can't go with a doubtful, a negative attitude and expect anyone to want to come along and anyone to want to follow. But when my attitude is right and I'm doing it for the right reason, I feel in my heart that this is what God will require and that mankind is in need of, we will all be on the same accord. Therefore, Dr. King had overwhelming inspiration to serve people and he had an overwhelming uh, crowd following him to do this the same. So, let's be so inspired to put the needs of others before us. Equal justice for all is a mission. So, number three. Servants work with the team. So, we have the servant leader that builds the team we have the servant leaders that's going to inspire the team. Now we have the servants that's going to work with this team. In the Bible, Moses had a problem, y'all. His servant role was, was tremendous. His, his plate was running over, in fact, with duties. And I know this person because sometimes my plate seems like a platter more so than a plate because it's running over with duties. And we become overwhelmed. But see, Moses had an issue and he became frustrated dealing with the life issues of over 2 million people in every situation that he was placed on. They were depending on him. They were looking to him to seek God on their behalf because they had been freed and now they did not know how to go about life on their own accord and how to have rules and regulations. So they need someone to oversee and be the oversight person. So this was Moses, but he was frustrated. He needed a team. So on his on his behalf, his father, his father-in-law Jethro was able to observe and glean that Moses was in trouble. And so he stepped in as a team member, had a conversation with Moses about what he was doing. And see, we find ourselves sometimes in the same predicament, but we don't ask for any help. So then Jethro asked Moses, why was he doing all of this? And his pride was that when they had an issue, they came to me for counsel from God. And so now here we are. And so Jephro being a team player on Moses' team, he pointed out that you need to seek other men, men of God, men that feared God, and also men that were trustworthy, men that hated dishonesty, men that weren't money lovers, to also be there to be judges and help be, do counsel uh, to relieve some of this on your plate. So now, here we are. The Gravel County Human Relations Council. Building a team, working. And sometimes they need help. We as a community have to come to their aid and their rescue. They can't do it all. They've been commissioned to do a work, but yet their hands seem to be filled. With the life challenge we have today, they can't do it all. They're looking for servant leaders. They're looking for people that are willing to be leaders in the community to help overcome this despair that we have in our country today and in our community today. We have to organize and be organized and serve each other. We've got to be sure and we've got to be very sure. 
that the team moves as one unit. God is able to lead us and to do great work in this county. We don't have to go outside of Granville County to do a work. We can work right here. It's enough work within Granville County. Sure, you can spread it abroad, but, but home comes first, and we must see to the need of those in this house. And we have to work with the people that God has sent us and appreciate those that are doing a work, creating legacies. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Decide, dedicated and decided that his entire life would be dedicated to the service of others. His compassion was to start and to be a constant participant in the nonviolent protests and movements for racial injustice and equity and equality for everyone in the United States of America. Even so to the point where he was essential in the year-long Montgomery boycott riot pro and protest to aid the citizens of Montgomery. He encouraged many to stand strong, to stay right, and do fair and be just. Dr. King's work wasn't in vain, y'all. His love for all people wasn't in vain. His heart to do God's work wasn't in vain. He had a commission and he carried out his commission. His death wasn't even in vain. It was for the good of the people and the people in the land that also loved God took the mantle. And that's how we are standing here today in the footsteps of the Granville County Human Relations Council trying to continue to do a work and a legacy. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was a servant leader that served. How are we in the serving business? Are we serving or are we sitting back waiting to be served? Are we doing all that God has required us to do in the field of service? I leave you today with two verses of a scripture. And one is Mark 12, 30 and 31. It says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. And when we're able to do that, then we can do verse 31. And the second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. I say to you today, to be servant leaders, we must stand flat-footed, call wrong, wrong, See right is right. Fight for all injustice for all people all of the time. When we've done that, we can call ourselves servants and servant leaders of God, commissioned to do the right thing by God's children at all times. Thank you very much. God bless you. Good morning, God. Uh... We just say good morning to everyone, and we're here to on our traditional human relations MLK or Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. breakfast that we have, and we're certainly missing our traditional breakfast this morning of our ham and mm -hmm. eggs and grits and so forth. But it's been an unusual year, but we're still improvising, and we'll still have it. We first of all, let me say thank you to Dr. King and the legacy that he left. It was a living example of uh, how we all should live, that we need to treat each other fairly, and we all want to be on one accord because we're all God's children. And with that in mind, we also each year, we started about five years ago uh, presenting the Robert O. Blackwell Award. Many of you remember Robert uh, as a longtime deputy. We worked together about 35 years in the sheriff's office. A lot of us call him Big Robert. Some of us call him Robert O. A lot of them call him Daddy. A lot of people call him Robert. And a world of folks knew him as Reverend Blackwell. But we all knew him as friend. We all called him friend. Mm -hmm. He was a living example of trying to help people. Whether you uh, wanted help or not, he was there to help you. He was always oh, yes. there with a living hand. Mm -hmm. So with that in mind, uh, we're here this morning to present the Robert O. Blackwell Award. And first of all, I want to thank our committee, the Robert O. Blackwell Committee, which consists of Sarah Mayfield, Ms. Ethel Anderson, Harold Slaughter, John Wimbush, and myself. So on behalf of the committee, 
We thank the uh, Human Relations for allowing us to be on this committee. And I thank the committee uh, for their selection this year. So with that being said, we'll <clears throat> move right along. This year's recipient of the annual Robert Blackwell Award is a strong advocate for the citizens of Groundwood County, all of the citizens of Groundwood County. As county commissioner for more than 20 years, and I might add, he is one of the two sitting commissioners that actually started the Human Relations Commission. So I want to get that in. He has worked tirelessly to improve the quality of life of all the citizens of Bramwell County, from issues of health care to broadband, transportation, and the environment. He has kept the people he served first and foremost in his mind. He serves uh, the county included Environmental Affairs Committee where he's been instrumental in helping to keep our roads clean each year. He's an advocate for uh, keeping the litter off our highways. He's a broadband on the broadband committee, which we hope will have broadband in our county before many years. I'll say years and hopefully yes, less than that. But we've already started in that northern end where we don't have any internet or very little so he's very much interested in that the gravel county recreation i've uh, been very uh, instrumental in our gap gravel athletic park he's on our 275th planning anniversary committee which we will celebrate in july of this year he's on the carts board providing transportation for our seniors that they can get to the doctor's office, get their medicine, get their groceries, or whatever their needs are. And he's on our emergency service committee, where we are looking at all emergency service from 911 to fire to the sheriff's office, very instrumental in that. So this recipient has also been, he serves on the Granville County Health System Board of Trustees. He's also on the NACO, National Association of County Commission, Steering Committee, as well as being active with the Cartaw Regional Council of Governments, where he served on the Executive Committee and the Nominating Committee. And he was recognized as the Council of Governments' outstanding elected official in 2018. In addition to that, his service, he is also active in his church, his community of Oak Hill. He's on the Joe Toll Alumni Association. He's not only dedicated to the citizens, but he's also dedicated to his family, to the people in Oak Hill, in which he serves District 1, as well as the entire county. So on behalf of the Granville County Human Relations, we want to present the Lotus J with the Robert O. Blackwell Award. In addition to that, as I mentioned, we've been in this pandemic almost now a year. What stands out in my mind is when they, we had the food trucks that came to the northern end. Commissioner Jay, he went to Stovall. He stayed there the, all day, had to get the food out. And when he went to the Oak Hill community, he stayed there the whole day getting food out. He just volunteered to do this. This past spring, summer, and fall, he has mowed neighbor's grass without being asked. He's mowed other people's property that they didn't even know who was mowing the grass. So this is the kind of individual that we're recognizing this morning. So uh, at this time, Mr. J. I want to read this plaque that says the Granville County Human Relations Commission presents the Martin Luther King Jr. Award to the Lotus J. in memory of Reverend Robert O. Blackwell, Building Bridges to Better Understanding, presented on January the 18th, 2021. And we proudly present to you this award and most deserving, and we congratulate you. Thank you for your service. Thank you. I owe both of y'all. Dilly. <laughs> Dilly. Uh, I'd like to say, uh, <clears throat> I don't know, there ain't many times I'm kind of like speechless, but uh, I just like to say thank you. And 
I know I was on these many things, I've done this many things, but you know what I do? I love my county, I love my community, I love the peoples. I try to serve uh, them to the best that I can. I do what I can, because uh, not for fame or uh, uh, money or whatever. I do it because of my heart, because I love each and everybody. Uh, and I can just think back, I call him Reverend O. Uh, sometimes we used to go to Martin Luther King's service, and when he couldn't drive, I would pick him up and take him, bring him, bring him down to service, Martin Luther King's service. And it's a great honor to just present, to get a award in his honor. And thank you. And I owe you. It. <laughs>
thank you so much again as we have enjoyed a glorious time together. And I ask now that as we prepare to close, that we remain in peace, that we remain in love one with another. Now, these words of benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand.